Is that clear? If two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, we agree. That's the law of agreement. The power that is generated when two individuals come into agreement in the spirit. Hi, saints. I hope you've been blessed by all the messages we've been uploading on this channel. And I know for sure that this particular message will bless you greatly. The message is just a 21, message, 21 minutes message, but it kind of feels like it's a one hour message because Apostle Ramosa has been able to compress so many spiritual values together into one short message. And I know for sure that this message will bless you greatly. The message actually talks about corporate prayers the importance of corporate prayers how important it is for the church to come together and pray and apostle must always have a way of bringing in several examples into his messages just like he has done in this one where he actually had to bring in marriage as god's own plan god's own strategic plan into um the earth and here and that will actually bless you greatly please do all to subscribe while you watch do all to like and also do all to drop a comment tell us how this message is actually blessed and impact you and please do all to share to your family and friends as well so we all have them blessed god bless you Glory became too intense that the priest could no longer minister if we are able to trap this dimension it has the capacity to blot out the human office you know the temple captures human offices and offices in various dimensions angelic cherubim offices in various dimensions but if this glory if this glory is captured it can be so intense that it covers even the space where human beings you stand ministry and the Bible says that the priests could no longer minister. So Solomon now began to pray. Prayer is long. But I want to bring something out. Very long prayer that I want you to go and read. Are you there? Prayers. Began to offer prayers. Began to offer, that was the prayer of a nation. Began to offer prayers. Began to offer prayers. And then God, who was invincible, became visible. He appeared like fire. Physical fire that the human eyes saw. That's what we call the realm of glory. Where the things that are hidden in the supernatural realm, because of the systems that we have put in place, that mirrors the dimensions of God and our willingness to, to receive from God, God is at liberty to step out of his own dimension and to be visible to the human eye. Do you think that sickness can stand that fire? There was a physical fire. You think sickness can stand it? Death can stand it. God was trapped and he began to enlarge himself in the congregation. In a, you cannot have that experience and backslide. You say you are struggling with masturbation. Hmm. That fire will lick up that lust. Not because you are even praying for it. Because you are not likely to be on your feet if that fire appears here. A physical fire. It came into that temple. Tell me how those people will go into battle and come back defeated. He answered by fire. 
So we're going to go into the New Testament now. It was Jesus that gave us an idea of the application of what we have been studying from New Testament perspective. And I want to take us to the book of uh, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Just stay with me as we build. I want this matter to get home. I want it to get home. That part of what we are called to do is that God wants to use our lives to show principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. And I, I've been studying my Bible and praying and asking God, okay, how are we going to achieve this dimension? Ah, he, he gave me some insight. You will now understand what it means when Moses, in his intercession, was asking God to accompany Israel. And um, God now said, all right, I'll, I'll send you an angel. And the guy did not accept the accompaniment of an angel. He said, you know what, if you are not going, we, we, in fact, is the journey so important? We can, <laughs> we can, we can, we can abandon that, that journey. Where, where are we even going? And God now said, okay, okay, my presence. If you have ever seen that kind of fire, you will despise the countenance of an angel. They trapped the presence of God down. God was their captive. And he enlarged himself. He enlarged himself. He enlarged himself like a flame in their midst. That's how church is supposed to be. A place where that which is invisible can become visible and enlarge himself. Enlarge himself. So Jesus gave us some insight in the book of Matthew chapter 18. If you would turn your Bible, Matthew 18. From verse 18 to 20. Verily, this is Jesus. Jesus is revealing spiritual possibilities that are obtainable by acts of faith. He said, Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall bind, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is the first possibility that Jesus unveils. Um, meanwhile, the interpretation of this scripture because of the use of English is a bit defective because people think that what he meant is binding demons and all of that. No. Um, it's more contractual than that kind of warfare activity. It's just like um, for instance I am an expert in a certain aspect of um, the petroleum industry technicalities. I am an expert because I was there for 16 years so in a certain aspect of um, Petroleum industry technicalities, I'm an expert. Now, if you have money, maybe you have some millions of US dollars, and you are willing to bring your millions of US dollars, I am an expert. And we can come to the nation of Ghana and present a proposal. If the president approves our proposal for us to do business here, uh, we need to write an agreement concerning the proceeds that will come out of the business. Maybe because you brought in the money, you have 60%, and because I bring in the technical know-how, I have 40%. The moment we sign this document, I am bound by the document, you are also bound by the document. This is, that's what that scripture is saying. Yeah. 
This scripture is referring to binding contracts. So when as the ecclesia, as the ecclesia, as this congregation, if something is going on in Ghana and we decide to, as a congregation in agreement, we say we will refuse this, heaven will also sign and it will become law. That's what he's saying. So this is, this is our operation as a parliament. Because you will notice it's beyond one person. Say, ye, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. So that's the operation of the parliament. Legislative capacities of the people of God. So if we satisfy the requirements of this legislative possibility, we can actually refuse things and heaven will countersign and it will become so. And when somebody tries to do, to undo what we have done, the power of heaven will, will strike it. So this is one of the powers that we have. Okay, next verse. Verse 19. And again, this is another power. I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, touching anything that they shall ask it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven are you there notice in this particular possibility spiritual possibility there is a quorum there is a quorum requirement you must be at least two to be able to achieve the requirement of this possibility exactly if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask we agree that's the law of agreement the power that is generated when two individuals come into agreement in the spirit have you um, read the scripture that says that one shall chase a thousand and two shall put ten thousand to flight. Have you read that scripture? That was a scripture that Saul did not know. Because Saul's, Saul's capacity was one thousand. David's capacity was one thousand. But when they came back from war, the women say Saul has killed his 1,000 and David has killed his 10,000. Saul did not know it that it was the 1,000 of David that was interacting with his own 1,000 that produced the 10,000 productivity level. And because of this lack of understanding, he went after David. He went after the person that was adding up to produce that exponential possibility. The reason is because Saul doesn't understand the power of two. Doesn't understand. So you will now notice in the New Testament that Jesus now begins to send apostles two by two. And have you heard the scripture in the book of Proverbs that said two is better than one because they will have a good reward for their labor. It is in, it's still in keeping with that context that marriage is a strategy from God. Still that context. So that you and your wife form the basic quorum. The basic quorum for asking. And when there's challenge between you and your wife, the Bible reveals that your prayers will be hindered. There is a potential capacity that you have in God that is going to be hindered because of that challenge. So if the devil wants to steal from you as a family, he affects your relationship with your wife. Because when you are in disagreement, you cannot find that place of alignment in order for you to exercise that potential. Are you still with me? Even though there were two spiritual possibilities that Jesus unveiled, 
he only explained one he only explained number two he didn't explain number one so in verse 20 Jesus now explains the engineering behind the possibility in number two do you get it all right so verse 20 this is his explanation for why number two is possible he said for where two or three are gathered together in my name I am in the midst of them so those two people can trap my dimensions this is the description of the local church that Jesus is beginning to set a premise set perspective about that the moment we go beyond individuals and we unite in two or three to form a basic quorum if you know what you are doing you can trap me that is a system that can trap me and when I'm trapped the impact of the influence you can generate will will hit heaven that's how heaven can be involved because I am trapped in the middle of that arrangement so the idea of the local church is a system that is put in place to trap down the dimensions of God so that our corporate ability is beyond human ability our corporate might is beyond human might our corporate strength is beyond human strength and the things are in that environment we have the capacity to corporately move the hand of God That is the power of the local church. See, this is the system that I want to build in the earth. Are you there? I still need to take you on a journey so that you understand the influence of one single believer. You know the Bible says that God is spirit and that dead that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse 24. I know you know that. The question is, why did God decide to be spirit? Because the physical realm, where we are, is not designed for spirit. Why did God decide, decide to be spirit? Why? Because that's a limitation. It's a limitation because, because he is spirit, he doesn't have the legitimacy by reason of his own royal decree. He doesn't have a legitimacy to operate here without permission. So why did he put that bottleneck on himself? And he wants his kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Are you following my, my thinking? The reason why God decided to limit himself to the spirit realm is because of man. Because he created man. Your spirit was designed to be his accommodation. So that if God wants to interfere with human affairs, what he, what he will do is he, he wears your spirit. Then you are the one that carries him around. So just like, just like if a man wants a child, the, he will need to marry a woman. There's no other way. You can't go to the river and say, hey, 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 then the child will fall. No, nothing will happen to you. You'll go back home. But if you get serious about get, having a baby, you will need to marry a woman. It is through that agreement that a baby can come out. If God wants to do anything in the earth, just like a man cannot have a baby without a woman, God cannot do anything here without a man. Be that is the reason why man is the only creature that God created that has legitimacy to operate in the two realms only creature no other creature not even God himself man has legitimacy he has a right to operate in the natural realm because he has a body of earth that gives him legitimacy in the three-dimensional world he also has a spirit in him and the spirit that is in him gives him legitimacy to operate in the unseen realm so when you hear God say we have the scriptures say God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
he's saying that it's only your spirit that can contact him because your spirit is operating on that frequency especially if your spirit being is infused by the holy ghost because of your regeneration you can you can travel in his network you can travel in his realm and as astronauts explore space you can explore god exactly so he wears you you become the organism that carries him around and there are powers that are available to you just because he dwells inside of you you can sense things going on in his realm through his spirit you can understand his mind through his spirit you can peep into his ancient archives through his spirit because the bible says that no man understands the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him it means that your things you don't even know your things the things of man are calibrated on his spirit it will take the holy ghost to unpack your things the things of god knoweth no man the bible says except the spirit of god now we have received the spirit which is not of this world but the spirit which is of god that we may know the things that are freely given to us of god so we have access to the things of god because we are infused with the spirit of god and it happens to be that the things of god are calibrated on the spirit of god and it is the spirit of god that we're in league with that means we can access the things of god and that's why the bible says that the spirit of god searches all things even the deep things of god is now accessible oh my god that means i can function i'm still telling you about a believer not not when we join our forces together i can function in such a way that i can explore god's depths god's secrets I believe that this message has actually blessed you greatly and if the message has blessed you please do want to share to someone out there who actually needs to listen to this message this is actually the message for the season um this is one of the messages you can't just get out of listening to because every time you listen to this kind of message it becomes fresh within your spirit and there's something it does to your spirit it sparks your spirit up and you don't just know when you start praying there's a kind of holding this kind of message gives to you it's actually the message for the season this is what the church needs to know this is what the church needs to hear this is what every believer needs to know at such a time as this we are a praying church and we cannot afford to start to stop praying uh, so it is time to pray and it is time to pray more more than we have ever prayed and not just praying alone but praying corporately as a body and when we begin to pray corporately as a body we'll begin to see more results as though God has had foot to begin to walk the earth again God bless you once more for watching please do all to subscribe please do all to like and do all to drop a comment have a great day.